let g be a group and fixed little g in g. Prove that this set here, z of g, which is the set of all x that commute with little g, so it's x such that gx equals xg, is a subgroup of g. This symbol here means subgroup. This subgroup, we're going to show it's a subgroup, um, is called the centralizer of little g. So it's the set of all elements uh, that commute with little g. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the proof. So to prove a set is a subgroup, we have to satisfy three criteria. The first one uh, is to show that our subgroup, uh, which I'll call, say, H, is non-empty. The second condition is to show that given two elements, say x and y, in H, the product is also uh, in H. And this has to be true for all, for all H. I didn't write it, but this is for all x, y, and H. This is basically saying um, it's closed under the group operation. And three, uh, given any element x in H, the inverse element should also reside in H. And this is saying that the group is closed under inverses. Okay, so let's go ahead and show it's not empty. So in this problem, our H is Z of G, right? It's the centralizer of little g. So we have to find an element that commutes uh, with little g. Well, that should be pretty easy. So note, if we look at um, GE, well, that's equal to G because E is the identity. But that's also equal to EG because E is the identity. So GE is equal to EG. This is precisely the assertion that E resides in the centralizer. So this means that E is in the centralizer of little g. So the centralizer is a non-empty set. So it's non-empty. It's non-empty. OK. Oh, by the way here, um, this is obviously a subset of G. It's one of the requirements, right? So it is a subset. So this shows the first condition. Now we have to show it's closed under the group operation. So take any x, y in the centralizer of little g. And so now what we typically do is we write down what this means. So this means, this means... that gx is equal to xg, right? It means that little x commutes with little g, and it also means that little y commutes with little g. Right? That's what it means for an element to be in the centralizer. x is in the centralizer means that x commutes with little g. y is in the centralizer means that y commutes with little g. Now we have to show the product is in the centralizer. So we have to show that xy commutes with little g, the product itself. So the natural thing to do now is to look at the product. So then xy times little g. And I'm going to be a little bit terse here. I'm going to say things in words rather than write them down. We're going to use associativity now. This will become xyg. And now we know something. Little y is in the centralizer, right? So that means that yg is equal to gy. So this is equal to gy. And so this here is because little y is in the centralizer of little g. Now we can use associativity one more time, and we can write this as xg little y. And now we can use the fact that little x is in the centralizer, so this is equal to gx little y. And this is because little x is in the centralizer of little g. So you see, both conditions are used. We're almost there, and now we use associativity, and we have g of xy. So we start with xy times g, and we show it's equal to g times xy. So this means that xy commutes with little g, so xy is in the centralizer. What a beautiful argument. So this shows that the centralizer of little g is closed under the group operation. Now we just have to show it's closed under inverses. So I'm going to do it again. So take any x in the centralizer of little g. So this means 
that xg is equal to gx. I wrote it a little bit differently this time. I, I think I've been writing gx equals xg. It's the same thing, right? It doesn't really matter which way you write it. Now we have to show the inverses there. This is going to be a little bit trickier. So then we have to look at the inverse, x inverse little g. So we somehow have to involve, let me switch colors here, um, this equation, right? So I'm thinking we can do something like this. Uh, this is x inverse g e, right? We need to insert x somehow, so we can use e to do that. Watch this. This is x inverse, and we're being a little bit abusive here with associativity, okay? This is, this is x, x inverse, right? You can do that because x, x inverse is e, right? x is the inverse of x. When you multiply them, you get e. Now we can put these in parentheses, okay? And this is equal to x inverse, and then this step here, we can use the fact that little x is in the centralizer. So this is xg, x inverse. Again, being a, a bit abusive here with the associativity. So this step here is because of this, right? This is basically because x is in the centralizer of little g. Again, just dropping the parentheses here, we get x inverse x, g x inverse. And this is e g x inverse, which is simply g x inverse, right? Because this is e, and then e times anything, well, that is anything. So we have x inverse g is g x inverse. So x inverse is in the centralizer of little g. So that shows that it's closed under inverses. So we've shown it's not empty, closed under the group operation, and closed under inverses. Therefore, the centralizer of an element is a subgroup of g. And that completes the proof. I hope this video uh, has been helpful.